In this video, I'm planning on going through the derivation of the thermodynamic property entropy. So, put that, so derivation of the property entropy. So what I want to do is first consider, so let's, so I want to consider a few processes. So let's say that first we have a process that goes from 1 to 2. And I'm going to call this process A. And then we have a process that goes from, there should be 2 here, that goes from 2 to 1. I'm going to call this process B. And then we have another process that also goes from 2 to 1. And I'm going to call this process C. So basically what we have is we have process A that goes from 1 to 2. And we have process 2 to 1 can be either B or C. And I'm going to assume that both processes, so both processes are internally reversible. So then what we can do is we can integrate this, so delta, so dq over t. And so if we do that, let's first do that for um, a to b. So this is going to be equal to, um, so let's start with, I'm going to actually start here and go from 2 to 1 across b first. So from 2 to 1, delta q, t, and this is for b, which is internally reversible, minus, and then we have so for this one, we want to go back along A. So this is going to be from 1 to 2, delta Q over T this is for A, which is internally reversible. And then we know that this is going to be equal to 0 because it is internally reversible. Now let's do the other one. So the other one we want to go from path A and then come back on path C. So we're going to have delta Q over T is equal to 2 to 1 and this is dQ over T and then this is going to be C which is internally reversible minus and then this is 1 to 2 dq over t, this is over a again, so internally reversible. And since the, the, these are both internal, internally reversible, we know that this is also equal to zero. So since both of these equations are equal to zero, what we can do is set them equal to each other. So let's do that. So I'm going to start with the first one, so 2 to 1, so dq over t, B. I'm going to leave off the internally reversible, but just remember that they are. And then this is 1 to 2 dQ T A. And then this is equal to, so this is 2 to 1 dQ over T C minus 1 to 2 delta Q over T, and then this one's A. So right away we can cancel out A because it just subtracts out. And so then we're left with this. So we have 2 to 1, delta Q over T, B is equal to 2 to 1, delta Q over T, C. Now we have this equation, 
what we want to do is kind of interpret this because it, it looks like maybe like this doesn't really mean anything, but we want to interpret this. So first I'm going to just going to specify that this is internally reversible. A couple of things I want to point out. First of all, B and C are arbitrary processes. So remember, if I go back up here to this drawing, remember we had B and C, and we just, I just kind of drew them on like they were pretty arbitrary. Like, I, like they could have been any path. Um, so B and C are arbitrary processes. Um, they could be any process if they go from 2 to 1. So could be any process from state two to state one. And for any of these processes, so for any, I'm just gonna say for any arbitrary process, they'll end up being equal. So basically what that means is that this, so delta Q over T, does not depend on the process. Only the states. And so what that means, so what, like, for, like, we've looked at a lot of thermodynamic properties now, and the definition of a thermodynamic property is that it doesn't depend on the process, it just depends on the state. So that means that we've just now found a new thermodynamic property. Like, we've found something that only relies on the states, not on the process. So since this only relies on the states, that means that this is a property and so we're going to give this a name and, um, and I'm actually going to write before I do that, so for this, so delta Q over T for an internally reversible, that's important, make sure that we're talking about internally reversible here. So this integration is the same for any internally reversible process between two states no matter the process. And so this is a thermodynamic property, and what we're going to call this is entropy. So this is entropy, which is a new thermodynamic property. And it's usually written with an S. So you'll see entropy written in a few different ways. Um, I have one way here. You'll also see it in the differential form, which is ds is equal to delta q over t. Make sure to specify that this is internally reversible. And this right here, that's a delta because it's a property. So it's Basically, this is a point function. So that means that delta, we can rewrite this as delta S is equal to S2 minus S1, which is equal to 1 to 2 dS, which is equal to 1 to 2 delta Q, T, and then this is internally reversible. So we've gone through this derivation for entropy. This doesn't really say anything about what 
entropy is. Um, some people consider that entropy is a measure of disorder. Um, basic, so basically, we're going to use it to compare processes that do the same thing. So, for instance, let's say we compare two pumps. And we can calculate the entropy for each pump. If we have a pump that has a small entropy, that we're going to take that to mean that that's a better pump because it's closer to ideal. And so, therefore, that pump would probably be less expensive or more expensive. If our pump has a large entropy change, that means that it's probably a really bad pump design and it's probably really cheap. So, we're, that's how we're going to use entropy. We're going to use it to compare processes to, first of all, see if a process is possible, but second, to see how good the process is. And one thing that I want to point out is that you don't need to go through the integration each time you solve. Since entropy is a property, it's been tabulated, or it's been quantified and put in the table. So you can look up the entropy values in the tables. And the entropy has, so the tables, um, so I'm just going to say the tables have entropy. And the units are usually kilojoules per Kelvin or BTU per ranking. Um, or there's also specific enthalpy, which just means it's been divided by the mass. So specific Enthalpy would have units of kilojoules, Kelvin, kilogram, or um, BTU, Kelvin, kilogram. Actually, sorry, Rankine, kilogram. So another thing is since this is a property, this property applies to all processes, not just internally reversible. So this is a property that applies to all processes, not just internally reversible. And so we can use this in an analysis of any process and the other thing is, so I'm just going to write, can be used in analysis of any process. And also, this applies to both open and closed systems. So applies to open and closed systems. So there is one special case of this that I want to quickly talk about. Um, so let's say that we have, and I'm going to write special case. And I want to show you this special case because you'll see this equation a lot. And I want you to know uh, for what special case it actually applies to. So if we have it internally, so internally reversible, isothermal, process, then we know that the temperature is equal to T naught. And so then we can calculate the entropy as delta S is equal to S2 minus S1 is equal to, and then this is delta Q over T, it's internally reversible. And then this is equal to um, since T is T naught, so T is constant, we can pull it out of the integration. So then we have 1 over T naught, and then this is 1 to 2, delta Q, internally reversible. So then this is just equal to Q, 1, 2, over T naught. And so if you have an internally reversible isothermal process, you don't need to look up entropy on the tables. You can just use this equation to calculate what your change in entropy is. But just keep in mind that this only applies if you have an isothermal process.